Am I the a-hole for snapping at my mother for asking me to cancel my trip to babysit my nephew? My 19 female cousin, 28 female, gave birth to a baby boy four months ago. For two months, she's been dumping my nephew at our house to babysit him because she needs a job as soon as she can start working again. Next week, I have to go for a five-day trip to a city where I'm starting university in a few weeks to set up my room in my friend's apartment. It's new. And I already called people from the internet provider we'll be using to help set up the router and TV. I'll be alone for the whole duration of my stay, and the city is six hours away, so nobody can help me out. My mother asked me this morning to babysit my nephew next Tuesday, as I'd already be at the city, because my cousin has two job interviews. I asked the mandatory, am I really the only person who can look after him? And to my shock, no. Turns out, my older sister, my cousin's husband, and her in-laws are all available. I laughed in her face and told her no way am I doing that, and she started screaming at me for being an ungrateful and irresponsible brat. I snapped and told her I don't care to look after someone else's kid, and that I have better things to do than babysit a four-month-old whose own dad is available to care for him. My mother then argued it's his only day off. And her in-laws are conservative and think the father shouldn't be bathing a kid or changing his diaper and that I should be compassionate because of that. I just told her I don't give a crap and that's not my business. She later tried asking nicely for me to move my trip and I snapped. Again, saying I don't care for them enough to do that. Am I the a-hole? Edit. People told me he's actually my second cousin, not nephew, so thank you for correcting me. Also to add, this isn't the first time I've been asked to sacrifice something for the family to explain why I snapped almost immediately. Now for the top comments. So your mom thinks being conservative means a husband and father can be irresponsible, and a random teenage cousin should cancel plans to watch a kid that isn't theirs? Gross. Stand your ground, not a hole. Husband is conservative, as in conserving his energy. Right, LMFAO. Lazy idiot. Like, sir, that is your kid. Not a hole. Guess what? He doesn't get days off being a dad. Not your baby, not your problem. Make it clear that if you are going to be expected to take care of the baby, then they can expect you will never be available. Don't ask if there's anyone else available to watch the baby anymore, because they'll just lie to you since now they know you have a spine. If they are conservative, then as a grandmother, it is mother-in-law and your mother's duty to help her raise that child. A mother's job is never done. Their views, not mine. Not they whole. I'm curious to what your mother's argument are against your sister, your mother or your cousin's mother-in-law watching that child. My sister is bipolar and in a depression episode, which I understand. She avoided saying why the in-laws can't. My mom can't because she works as a doctor and has long hours. To me, it sounds there are still enough adults who could look after the children. It is also very unconservative that your cousin's husband doesn't provide enough so the cousin didn't have to work and didn't need the interviews. In turn, he needs to be unconservative enough to parent his child. It seems likely that your mother is volunteering for you these duties more so than them asking despite having other people who can watch the kid. Actually, you just pointed it out to me. I enrolled in a university for architecture in a sexist country. I don't and never wanted kids and I look unconventional. My extended family always filled my parents' heads with how I should have been taught conservative values, even though my parents aren't conservative. They might be trying to get me to like kids enough to have my own one day. Next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for reporting my daughter's car missing after her stepbrother took it without permission? I got my daughter, 17, a new car two months ago. Her stepbrother, 19, has gone crazy about it ever since and has been attempting to drive it. But my daughter made it clear she doesn't want him to. He'd refer to it as our car and would get mad when my daughter decorates it with pink and add teddy bears and necklaces as decoration. He'd get angry and say that she was ruining their car and embarrassing in front of his friends, although she never let him get inside of it. I asked my husband to talk to his son, but he said that my daughter and I need to chill. Fast forward to this past Friday. My daughter called me at work saying her stepbrother took her car while she was upstairs after he demanded the keys and she refused. I called his phone, but he didn't respond. I called my husband and told him what happened. I told him that he needed to go bring the car back or I'd have to call the police. He called his son, then called me back, saying his son was just taking it to go to the movies with his friends and will bring it back at 9 p.m. I couldn't wait, but I wanted him one more time to bring it back, but he stalled. 
so I called the police and reported it stolen. My stepson was picked up from his location and brought into the local police station. We got the car back, but it was a mess. The decorations and toys in it were gone. My daughter didn't stop crying about it. My husband blew up at me on the phone for calling the police on his son and causing him to spend the night there. They both came home the next day, and a huge argument ensued with my husband, saying I made a mistake reporting the car missing, and said that I escalated the situation and that I was the one who created it, and should have got his son a similar car or at least told my daughter to share. Otherwise, we wouldn't be dealing with his son's temper tantrums. The house has been full of tension since then and everyone is just mad at each other. I didn't want police involvement, but seeing my daughter cry, I just couldn't take it. Now for the top comments. This is weird. For the simple act of reporting the car stolen when it was in fact stolen. Not they ho But for marrying and subjecting yourself, and more importantly your daughter, to the environment created by your husband and stepson, you're the a-ho. Get a divorce, and get them as far away from your daughter as possible. Exactly what I was gonna say. Right. The fact that the husband is gaslighting her is crazy. If he wants his son to have a car, him and his son's mother can buy it. It's not an OP to buy her husband's adult son a car. We now know where his son got his entitlement behavior from. Not today, ho. You told your husband to get the car back or you'd call the police. He and his son ignored you. You called the police. No one should be surprised. Why doesn't your husband buy son a car? It sounds like your finances are separated. Does the kid work? Go to school? Do anything responsible with his life? Well, not exactly. He told her he went to the movies and would bring it back about 9. In other words, Opie doesn't matter. Her threats weren't taken seriously and he got called on it. Who does the father think he is, degrading Opie's instructions on what to do with a car that isn't his? I don't know why they think they have the rights to this car. I don't know why they haven't done the obvious thing and get one themselves, but I'm wary of this whole dynamic. Man, he's 19. He's a legal adult, and he stole from his minor step-sibling. Man needs to man up and figure out his tantrum nonsense isn't going to blow over so easily. And now he is on the hook for legal consequences because he is, in fact, a legal adult. Not day Hall. Opie's problems with her stepson will only escalate from here due to his entitlement and her husband's lack of accountability for him. They aren't two years old. What is mine is not yours. He is too old to go on a jealous rage and throw tantrums. Was he the kid that have to have his own present at someone else's birthday too? Next story. Am I the a-hole for being furious with my wife for returning our daughter's birthday gift? I, 40 male, and my wife, 41 female, have been married for 12 years. We have a daughter and son together. Our daughter is turning 8 and has been wanting a Nintendo Switch. My wife got laid off from her job and has become more frugal with money. I'm still working and I'm happy to provide for the family. I have no issue with saving money. We have been planning daughter's birthday party and my wife has made it clear that the budget is $50. She bought all the decorations from the dollar store, which I didn't see an issue with. She told my daughter she could only invite five of her friends as it would save money on the amount of food we would have to spend. I bought the cake and a pizza. Daughter told us that she wanted a Nintendo Switch. My wife looked up the price for one and told her that it was too expensive. But I found a Switch online for a good price and purchased it. Her birthday party was this past weekend. She was so excited seeing that we got her a Switch. When everything calmed down, my wife started yelling at me for purchasing the console. I told her that I got the system for a good price. Daughter started school this year. When I picked her up from school, she went up to her bedroom to play with the Switch. That's when she starts crying and tells me the Switch was missing. I looked through her entire room and couldn't find it anywhere. My wife comes home handing me some money and tells me that she sold the Switch and got the money back. I started screaming at her for selling the Switch and upsetting our daughter. Her reasoning was that daughter wasn't letting brother use the console and that I spent money we didn't have. She packed a bag and is currently staying with her sister. I have purchased my daughter another Switch along with some games. Sister-in-law thinks I am being a horrible husband and not respecting my wife's decision on saving money. So to recap, you bought your daughter a gift that she wanted. Your wife threw a fit because you can't afford it. And instead of taking the issue out on you or temporarily making a budget change to recap the loss, though it seems money at the moment isn't a huge issue, she instead took it out on your daughter and returned a gift? Not the whole. Hard not the whole. Solely for the fact she took it out on her daughter. What do you mean money doesn't seem like a huge issue? 
they spend 50 bucks on a birthday party. I'm still working and I'm happy to provide for the family. I have no issue with saving money. This indicates to me they aren't living paycheck to paycheck. A switch costs anywhere from 150 to 250. And sure, that's not a small chunk of change, but it's not life-changing money. If they can afford to save, he's not doing something that indicates that they are going to go homeless if they buy their daughter a birthday present she really wants. Not day haul. Wife was so far out of line, I can't even. Returning to console on day two or three? She was intent on punishing both you and your daughter, and there's really no excuse for what she did. Sure, you spent money she didn't want you to spend, but returning the eight-year-old's gift after it had been gifted was cruel. Your wife is clearly way, way more stressed about money than you are. Does she know something you don't? Are you implying she might have some secret debt? Might not be a secret, but something Opie doesn't realize is as important as it actually is. Something like the difference of knowing if Fern is being old and knowing if Fern is will need replacing ASAP. Everyone sucks here. You two are married or divorced. Where's the communication? Why is your wife so paranoid about finances while you're seemingly blasé? Losing an income's not a small thing. And you don't say how much you make or where you live, just that you're working and happy to provide. You two need to be on the same page. And not going behind each other's backs because you think you're right and the other is wrong. Talk to your wife about her money concerns and a budget, and come to an agreement before making large purchases. I don't know what the good deal on the Switch was, but I expect it wasn't under $50 and would be surprised if you paid less than $200, honestly. Not to mention games. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my half-sister why my extended family were not at her birthday party? My half-sister is seven. She and I share the same dad but have different moms. My mom died when I was five. My dad married my half-sibling's mom when I was eight. They have four kids together, ages seven, five, three, and one. I have more family than they do. My mom came from a large family and had a lot of siblings, cousins, etc., as well as parents and grandparents who outlived her. So I have benefited from that. My dad came from a family who are in and out of jail, and he cut them out years ago. His wife is an orphan who was an only child and hasn't got a good relationship with her extended family. So my half-siblings have no extended family. It has been a point of contention between me and my dad. Me and his wife, my dad and my extended family, my dad's wife and my extended family. Dad thinks they should have expanded the family with my half-siblings. He believes they owed them a family. His wife believes the same. My extended family do not, and neither do I. The bad blood existed even before my half-siblings were born. Before she died, mom left her parents and her sister in charge of certain things she wanted me to have and not my dad. Apparently, she told him that getting sick so young and knowing she would leave me when I was so little made her realize how anything could happen. And while she trusted my dad, if he remarried, she didn't want his future spouse left in charge of her keepsakes. She did not want some random woman in the future holding onto items she treasured and wanted me to have. My dad was so unhappy about it and conflict arose there. I think all of this has contributed to my dad and his wife setting my half-siblings up with the expectation that my extended family would be theirs and that they should be coming to stuff like birthday parties and sending them gifts and taking them out for day trips like they do with me. Dad told her he told my grandparents about her birthday party and so she waited for them to show up and when they didn't, she was upset. She had friends there and friends of the family but not much in the way of family. She got upset and asked me why they didn't come. I had already voiced to my dad that he was being cruel, and I told his wife just as much, but they said it was my grandparents who were being cruel. So I decided to tell her that she was not related to my extended family. I explained to her that they didn't come because they are not friends of her parents, and they are not part of her or their family. I explained how they are my family because of my mom and how that worked. She looked so surprised to realize it didn't make them her family too, and hurt because she realized she was lied to about having lots of family. My dad and his wife were so angry at me for talking to her about it. They said at 17, I should have been more sensible to know it wasn't my place and was cruel to leave her with. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. They are being cruel to her by setting up this family dynamic. While telling her the truth hurt her feelings in the moment, it was a more loving thing to do. 
If you want to comfort your sister, tell her that while your extended family may be different, that you'll always be her family, that you and her parents love her and that she'll always have family around her even if they look a little different than yours. Tell her that love isn't measured in number of people giving it, but by the quality of love given. And as for your dad, while I understand that it's hurt that it wasn't kept in the fold after your mom's death, it sounds like his bitterness about it is leaking into what he's telling your sister. She's only seven and shouldn't be used as a guilt pawn. He needs to work on building community and friendships that can replace bio family if he cares that badly about a network for her. But it sounds like he doesn't actually care about her having a family. He just cares about his hurt ego. Not day hall assuming you told them gently and not in a mean or gloating way. It's a truth they need to understand. It may hurt a bit, but in the end, what would hurt more would be thinking that their own grandparents didn't like them. For some reason, your father seems to think that when he married your mother, her parents adopted him for life. While sometimes that kind of relationship will form, clearly your mom's parents don't feel the same way. And that's the right. He certainly can invite them to events with his new family, but it is up to them whether they want to take on the role that he wants them to take. He can't force it on them. The fact that your mother felt it was necessary to put her heirlooms in the hands of her family suggests that she may have had some inkling that your father would not be able to respect boundaries. And clearly she was right. And either way, he owes his kids the truth. I was as gentle as I could be while not being unclear about it because I didn't want to add confusion to her on top of all the sadness.